Suppose you have a binomial that contains perfect squares. Actually, more specifically, it contains a difference of two perfect squares. In other words, we have something that looks like x squared minus 25. Notice in this case, x squared is a perfect square. It's x times x. 25 is also a perfect square. It's 5 times 5. And in between those two terms is subtraction. What we do is we look at the square root of each of the terms. The square root of x squared is x, and the square root of 25 is 5. Then all we have to do is write our set of parentheses, and we put in the first one x plus 5, and the second one x minus 5. These opposite terms are called conjugates. When we have the same numbers, x and x, 5 and 5, but the signs are reversed, those are called conjugates, and we learned about those when we worked on square roots. Let's take a look at some examples to get the feel for what this looks like. In our first example, we have x squared minus 1. We take a look at it, and I notice that x squared is a perfect square, and 1 is as well. It's also connected by subtraction. I look at the square root of each of those terms. The square root of x squared was x, and the square root of 1 is 1. Then I write my two parentheses, x plus 1, x minus 1. Example 3 is a little more interesting, although not a whole lot. We have 4a squared as our first term. That is a perfect square. And we have 25 as our second term. We notice there's subtraction, and so we look at the square root of each of those terms. The square root of 4a squared is 2a. The square root of 25 is 5. Now all you have to do is write your set of parentheses, 2a plus 5, 2a minus 5. How about example 5? I think you get the hang of it by now. We notice they're both perfect squares. 100y squared, well that's 10y. 49x squared, its square root is 7x. And then we write our parentheses with our 10y plus 7x and 10y minus 7x. Example 6 is one worth paying close attention to. Notice here that I have 81x squared plus 16. 81x squared is a perfect square. 16 is a perfect square. However, it's not a difference of two perfect squares. It has to be a perfect square minus a perfect square. We can't factor using this method. You might be able to factor using greatest common factor or some of the other tools that you have. Next, I'd like you to try a few examples. Examples 7 through 12 on the next page are exactly like the ones we just did. Please pause the video here and try examples 7 through 12. Let's see how you did. In our first example, we have x plus 3, x minus 3. In number 8, y plus 8, y minus 8. Number 9, 5a plus 6, 5a minus 6. Number 10 is one where you have to be careful. Notice they are perfect squares. However, it is not a difference. It's a sum. However, you can pull a greatest common factor out. 9 is the greatest common factor, and we're left with 4x squared plus 9 inside the parentheses. 11, 9y plus 7x, 9y minus 7x, and the answer to number 12, 2x squared plus 5, 2x squared minus 5. And that's everything you need to know about factoring the difference of two perfect squares.